No, I actually, I woke up and I looked at my phone and I was like, oh, I can reply. Yeah. And then I uh, replied and then I went back to sleep for an hour. See, when, when I wake so, up, when I wake up stupid early like that, I like to text Chris OC to let him know I'm up, you know, just so he doesn't worry. And now oh, you're, you're on that list too. So yeah. if I have a message, I'm, I'm going to reply to it. Oh, so sweet. I know. I'm a good well, I'll try, I try not to text you too late at night though. Cause that's the thing. Like if it's like nine o'clock here, it's not late, but if that's midnight over there, mm. I mean, I'm like, I don't want to like, you know, blow up your phone at midnight. That's uh, that's pretty late. My man, if I didn't want to reply, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, but do you, do you have your phone on vibrate? Is that how you, how you do it? Hell yeah. Well, well, because some people have the ringtones and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to keep texting you right now? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, okay. Yours isn't too bad. I actually put my phone on something at night so that when it buzzes, it's, uh, it, it doesn't vibrate on my, the nightstand or head, whatever it is. So it's not wood on vibration. So it's not so loud. <laughs> <laughs> that that was pretty good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not. It's not. We're wood. so awesome. <laughs> All right, let's do a show. And with enough vibration, you'll have some wood. Oh, god damn it, Ray! It was so wholesome, you know. And then you just you just it's went never out. gonna be wholesome with me. Just ruined it. I'm R rated. <laughs> Everybody, welcome. Episode sixty-six of the Rich Dickman Show, the podcast that is slightly better than mediocre. I am your host, I am Rem. Once again, coming at you. It's beautiful weather today. It's like it was hot and gross and nasty, and I hated life. But it got better, and you know, it just makes a whole difference. A whole whole new world opens up when the humidity goes down to forty percent. Anyway, with me out in California, where the weather is worse because it's California. It's Ray. Ray Greenland's melting. What's up? It's uh, I'm coming to you from the 80s and 90s this week. Nice. It's, uh, it's been throwbacks for me. Look at you. Is it it's snowing some... yet? No. No. Miller High Life, the champagne of beers here, <laughs> keeping me refreshed. Is that a 40 ounce? <laughs> 32. Jesus. And uh, I have another 32 of uh, Bud Ice. My, be- I'm working on a beer belly tonight. Wait, well, hold Holy on. Smokes. Wait a second, you asshole. What are the rules? I get one of each. I'm sorry. It's cheap beer. It doesn't have to be in a can if it's this cheap. All right. I'm going to give you a pass <laughs> because it's the champagne of beers. <laughs> it's the champagne of beers. Uh, hey, it says Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee Whiz. So it even admits that it's basically Whiz. Whiz. It's yeah, everything out of that's, Milwaukee that's sucks. But hey, welcome to the Rich Dickman Show, everybody. If you're a new listener or an old listener, <laughs> burn. we appreciate you. Uh, we're the only show in the land that... Uh, what has richstickman.com as <laughs> a <some> website address? <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at Rich Dickman Show. <laughs> Call the Dickman line. 860 316 4776. All right. Um, we had, um, yeah, Ray, I'm, I'm medicating my back pain, so you're going to deal with me tonight. Re- oh, that's so good so far. Yeah, really quick, get on Amazon.com and get yourself. Uh, a t-shirt. All right. We have one that says slightly better than mediocre. We have the El Abogado attorney at law t-shirt. And of course the eat the re, re- <laughs> fuck you. The eat, eat the rich t-shirt that you can wear. It's, uh, you know, election season's heating up already. You know, we're, we're over a year away, but my God, we're full speed ahead. So go ahead and wear your t-shirt. Uh, that's at amazon.com. Go ahead. Search rich Dickman. All right. Ray, what's going on, man? How you doing? Um, yeah, I've been living in the eighties and nineties lately this, uh, this last week. I don't know what it is, but I've watched a lot of eighties movies, for example, and maybe we'll get to these later, uh, days of thunder and iron Eagle. Uh, what I watched another one too. Another just old movie. And then, uh, been, uh, listening to a lot of that eighties music, drinking this beer that I haven't had since probably like close to the nineties. Actually, I don't think I had any beer in the 90s. But anyway, that's what I think of like these Bud Light, <laughs> Bud Ice, all these like. What the fuck? I think what's of them going as on? really old beers. What is this, Ray? What are you, what's but, happening? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm, maybe I'm subconsciously feeling old and I'm like, let me go back. Let me go back. Oh. Um, and, 
Yeah, maybe that's. I don't know. Stick a pin in your '80s nonsense because I want to get back to that later if we remember. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. What's but, going uh, on, What's... dude? So we the other thing. So the chicken wings. Now we okay. talked about this what two weeks ago. Yeah, you were about to and go then, out and get chicken wings with your wife, right? And then all of a sudden you're talking about your order yeah. on Twitter and you're getting boneless wings, and your wife claims that she likes boneless wings. Well, there's no such thing as a boneless yeah. chicken wing, Ray. It's a chicken tender. All right, and I told you you need to divorce your wife. I don't care that you have two kids and one on the way. You can't, you can't go through the rest of your life with somebody who prefers a boneless wing over a regular chicken wing. You just can't. Yeah, I think that conversation will go well. I'll be like, hey, so we're getting a divorce, and she'll be like, wait, this is coming out of left field, and I'll be like, well, yeah, Rem said that yeah. there's no such thing as as boneless wings, so I have to divorce you, and she'll be like, okay, understood. Yeah, she'll be like, oh, uh, oh, you yeah. mean Rem from Torn Think Tank, the master advice giver for 114 episodes from from at the very least five years ago? <laughs> yeah, that's him. That's that's the guy. Okay, I, I I thought you were about to say, and the Rem from from Liquorfield and like keep naming like you were Khaleesi. Oh no, I oh, thought yeah. you were going down that path. Remgar. You could do that. No, it's, it's oh whoa whoa. I changed my Twitter. It's like I spent the whole last episode talking about how I'm uh, at Remgar and oh, now yeah. I'm at Rem Dickman. But uh, Rem of House Dickman, uh, creator of the Torn Think Tank, drinker of liquor, uh, breaker of barriers. And I don't know. Ray, tell me more about your chicken wings, buddy. I'm sorry. All right. So we went to Wingstop that day. Okay. And we got 40 wings. Yes. Because we dropped the kids off and it was just the two of us. And, and, like, and right, you ate three because because three is the perfect amount, according to you. No. I ended up eating 20. <laughs> um, for No, that's – okay. So that's the thing, right? So once you eat like 20 of them, when you're done, you're like, that was not – you don't feel satisfied. You feel disappointed. Like they – the first like five or so are really good, and then they start it's diminishing returns after that. That's all it is. But and, and same thing like if you constantly eat them, I was feeling the same thing. Now then, then we went and I had wings another time, and then we went to Costco. Oh, then yeah, like two nights later, we went and just I was like, man, I'm just craving chicken wings again. So we went to the store at like ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night, and I got chicken wings and ate them. And then uh, then after that, we like last weekend we were at Costco. And I was just walking down the meat aisle and sure they have like that huge Costco size thing of chicken wings. And it comes in, I think it's like six or eight. I think it's six packages, smaller packages of chicken wings, like all, uh, you know, perforated. Uh, you can tear them off. And anyway, a lot of chicken wings. It's like 10 pounds or something like that. So I've been eating those like four out of the last five days. I don't know what it is, but I've literally just had chicken wings for dinner like every night. But it's more, I, yeah, something about like I, the way I make them was better than where you buy them or something that I don't know. I can't get enough of them right now. So you know, I'm back at the table, the dinner table saying that maybe I was slightly wrong. I like my chicken wings slightly overcooked. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They got to be crispy. Yeah, you, you can't have them soft. Yeah, soft right. skins. Yeah, when they feel like like a moist chicken breast, I'm not, I'm not into it. Like I don't want this. This is no, gross. This no. is disgusting because the skin doesn't get crispy and the fat doesn't melt. It's like no, nah. no. Gross. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Are, are these are these bags of frozen wings or, or fresh wings? No, they're they're fresh, and I like to do salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and then put like some parmesan, actual parmesan cheese on them. You fry them end. or bake them. I we got an air fryer the other day. Have you used one of those? No, it, they're nice, man. Really. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Oh. No, it's, they're surprisingly useful. I, uh, at first I think like, yeah, that's a hoax, but you put them in there for like 10 minutes on each side and they come out amazing. You got to flip them? That's bullshit. Fuck that thing. I'm not doing that. You, you actually, you don't have to, but I do it so that it's even oh. on each side. Every well, bite's got to be the same. Look at you. I take a lot of care in my, in my chicken wings, right. apparently. All right, man. <laughs> I'm a chicken wing connoisseur. Are you, though? In one Ray, are we at that point? Later. Are we at that point now where, like, you got to eat a ton of chicken wings to impress your audience, much like a young version of Rem did? <laughs> no. No? Okay. But if I, if I, being on the internet, say that I'm a, a connoisseur of chicken wings, it's obviously true. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah. There's no one to, to argue against me. I mean, you're not going to do it. No, no, I believe we you. Just, you know, we're, we're in agreement. Yeah, yeah so I mean, it's true. Yeah, it's just like, you know, when I walk mm-hmm. down the street, I have to throw my penis over my shoulder to make it work. So, yeah, no problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. True. Yeah. Facts. Hey, Ray. All facts here. You know what would be mm-hmm. awesome right now if you were like, oh, hey, by the way, Rem, I was reading this awesome wrestling article. Oh, actually, um, I actually was reading this awesome wrestling article right after we were texting earlier about an awesome wrestling Oh, article. no shit. Tell me and more it was about really it. Good. Was it? Yeah. 
Yeah, so it was about uh, the police and how uh, Brock Lesnar beat the shit out of – fuck, what's his name? Seth, See, I, Seth I can't Rollins. remember. Seth Rollins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I didn't even watch any of this and I was entertained reading it. That, Like for real – so I was telling you facts <laughs> that – like the, the articles are good. I, I literally never watched a, a second of that and I was reading it thinking, okay, what's going to happen next? Really? So it's, it is entertaining. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that's a, that's a high compliment from you. Who, who is the writer of these articles? Oh, I don't I'm know. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm like a silly fucking <laughs> so It was you. It was oh, me. Oh my God. It was this guy, Rem Dickman. Yeah. Guy. So like, like Ray and I have to do our own promotion of all these things, which is, uh, all right. mm-hmm. um, yeah, check out my wrestling articles, uh, wwepodcast.com. I'm writing opinion articles under the opinion section. I've, since we literally released our last episode, I've written two articles and they're both up there. So you go check them out. Let me know. Let me know what you think if you're into professional wrestling as I am, or if you just want to, um, follow along like Ray does, and Ray Ray feels part of the action because um, he likes mm-hmm. how they're written. All right, thanks, Ray. Thanks for the little plug. You know what we need to do oh, to that? help promote things? What we need groupies. Can we get some groupies in here? <laughs> Where do we find groupies? Craigslist, maybe? Yeah, <laughs> eBay. Yeah, apparently, you have to you have to become a member of Craigslist to post. Now you have to you have to pay like five dollars a month. Like, oh fuck that. Like, I was trying to do that with Huel really? once to get a, get a news babe. Remember? At the beginning mm-hmm. of the show, I was trying to get a mm-hmm. news babe here, and we we're going to go on Craigslist. Mm-hmm. And then I had to create an account and pay money. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going wow. to do that. No way. Too much effort. Yeah, that's just a lot. There's a lot going on there. Um, it's too much effort for me when you have to enter like a capital letter in the password, right? Yeah. They're like, create a password. And they, you enter like just something like oh, A, B, dude. C, D, one, two, three, four. And then they're like, no, it has to have a capital letter, the symbol. Dude, don't. And you're, I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Don't get me started on the passwords, man. I'm so glad. Like, I know, dude. Where I work, my password is grandfathered in because I, I created it back in 2010, right? But now it's 50. You have, if you're creating a new password, it's got to be at least 15 characters long. It has to use at least three uppercase letters, has to have at least three numbers in it, and it has to have at least three symbols in it. Try making a password for some random jamoke who you're trying to get paid w- with that nonsense. Yes. God. Oh. God damn it. D- don't even get me started. Your your grandfather didn't password from 10 years ago or two, like nine years ago. Dude, the IT guy in me literally just killed himself. <laughs> like, oh my God, what are you doing? Oh, oh no, 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 so no. The, my, um, the method, the, the style, it doesn't have to be 15 characters. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, really? It should be. It should be. Shut up, <laughs> Because Ray. it's so easy to get those. No, it's not. It's so easy to... Uh, okay, hold on. Can, Let me hack your thing. Can right you now. hack my password? Oh, here. shit. Oh, my God. My yeah, mouse I is can, moving. can, actually. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to delete all your porn uh, if, you're, if you're mean. <laughs> it's all it's all hidden on a hard drive. It doesn't work anymore. So. Oh, God. It was such a great collection. Um, what else you got, Ray? You got anything? We're just going to go through the show. No, that's mostly yeah, it. That's I, just it. Ate, I just ate so many chicken wings. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. Well, I can fly now, actually. It's like <laughs> good, good affected for, me good for you, buddy. You, you got a chicken wing. <laughs> I remember those cravings, those chicken wing cravings, like needing needing that 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 dry buffalo rub from Buffalo Wild Wings. Was, oh, my God. I can taste it, right? It's like, oh, I need to go get chicken wings. Fit, fit. Let's get chicken wings. Uh, but then Fit died, mm-hmm. and we don't get chicken wings anymore. So, oh. yeah, there's that. Um, you know, I had... I wrote some things here, and I don't remember why. Ice House beer in Seattle. You ever drink Ice House beer? No, I don't think I've heard of it. Actually, it's like it's like a more potent beer. And I was in Seattle, okay. and I was twenty, and we bought like we bought like thirty five Ice House cans, and we were drinking them, <laughs> plus like a couple <laughs> bottles of Boone's Farm. Right, we were we were just drinking. Nice. Um, and um, some some Asian woman introduced herself to me. As a blowfish. And I said, <laughs> maybe me drunk and 20 years old. Oh, yeah. What's the blowfish? And she's like, oh, it's something I do with my mouth. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Why don't you show me? <laughs> <laughs> and so she takes a bottle of Boone's Farm and then and then puts the top of the bottle like in her mouth and then puffs up her cheeks around it. That, that was a blowfish. And then and I said, oh, yeah. And then she said, yeah. And she got up and she walked away. <laughs> That was it. That was it. That was it. <laughs> then I then I went up to my room and threw uh, up. Um all right. So I don't know I don't know what 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 brought nice. that upon me. That was that's an army story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. What's the waiting at once upon a child? 
Oh, okay. All right. So this 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 really got me earlier this week. Right? It was what day was? Is that the store? Yeah, yeah. It, it was Monday. Okay. Oh, I hate that store. And we typically don't go do errands during the week after work. But my wife wanted to go to the store, and this this type this store is a type where you take your old children's clothes and you can sell them, and they give you a credit or give you the cash, and then they have a bunch of like you know good condition used clothes you can buy there. Kind of you know, because you get things cheaper for kids. They grow out of shit real quick. Like we, we need- well, th- I've been in there quite a few times. Sometimes they don't know the value of stuff. Yeah. And you can find like some clothes you can find. You're like, that's worth a lot of money. Oh yeah. And they're selling for like three, three bucks. Yeah. And it's like brand new. Yeah, I mean, there's like, there's this, this item that was, it's originally $120 and it's, it's brand new in package and it was less than half price. You know, we got it for like 20. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So, but so the, the problem there is, uh, is that you have. You have people, people, people actually work at these stores <laughs> and you think you could bring your stuff in and they can go through it and give you a price and you can do it like within 45 minutes, right? You figure, but no, not, not at this store. Um, my, my wife asked me to go and I could have just stayed home with my son and, and watched TV and fucked off for like two hours, or three hours. Uh, but no, I, I was going to go because you know what? It was in the same plaza as the ramen noodle restaurant and maybe, maybe. I could convince everybody to want to get some ramen noodles afterwards because, you know, you had a craving for chicken wings. I had a craving for ramen noodles. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, that didn't happen either. I ended up uh, standing around and waiting for the better part of two hours while these jackasses who are soon to be paid 14 and $15 an hour in the state of Connecticut, the minimum wage, uh, just went ahead and talked about their breaks and, 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 uh, and, and Jason and his phone and uh, Stephen's date and and Wendy and her her man and how she does it. she she was fighting with him like like every every stupid every stupid <laughs> fucking thing you could think of they were talking about except you know my 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 kids clothes I'm trying to sell except work except work except work. and I'm and I fuckers you know and like I used to I worked at a retail store I made five dollars and fifty five cents an hour one of my first jobs you know but that's what everyone's making mm-hmm. back then. Um, but I still went to work with a sense of pride to do a very good job because I wanted people to think I was a good worker and because I wanted to do the very best I could and I wanted to make more money at some point. I wanted to make more money. I knew I was not going to make a living wage at five fifty five an hour despite just being in high school. Okay. Um, now, these assholes at this place are probably getting paid some around $10 an hour right now. And the state of Connecticut decided that it would be a great idea to pass a law that says uh, next year you have to pay all minimum wage employees $14 an hour. And the year after, you have to pay them $15 an hour. (sighs) Two problems. Number one, this store, uh, of the six employees that were there, three of them won't be working there anymore because they will not be able to afford them. Uh, And then... Uh, even if they were getting paid $15 an hour, what a goddamn insult that is to the people who actually struggle and go to school and work really hard for that $15 an hour versus these jackasses who can sit around and just fuck off for, for three hours in their shift and do nothing and they're still getting paid $15 an hour. <laughs> and so and what's their incentive to get to get better? There is none. 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 So I was sitting there. I was like – I was incensed by that thought for two hours as I stood at that goddamn store. But – but there was one good – one positive to come out of that. Is that um, Hot Drummer News Babe and I had a really interesting uh, political discussion based on what we talked about in our last episode. How about that? Oh, nice. Yeah. And we discovered that it is possible to talk about things and have disagreements and still be friends after and still be friends, Ray. Nice. Isn't that incredible? That's the way the world should work is that, you know, the whole – okay, not everyone agrees on everything. You get over it. Like. Don't, you don't have to hate somebody because of it, but you touched on like 10,000 things that I want to talk about. One, I hate once upon a child. <laughs> One time we called them an hour before we were going to go there. Cause we live, we don't live near any of them and we were packing up, getting ready to take some stuff. There was two of them along, like along the way to where we were going. So we called both of them. The first one said, we're not taking anything right now. And all we're trying to do is just drop stuff off and see what, what money we can get from it. The other one's like, Oh yeah, not a problem. We're like, well, we're an hour away. Like, will you, will you? still have like is it okay if we come and they're like yeah not a problem we showed them they're like yeah we're not taking oh anything jesus anymore. christ like are you fucking kidding oh me <laughs> like thanks a lot we called and they're we have told them like we called and they're like yeah sorry it's like uh 15 okay. an hour like, right 15 dollars an hour <laughs> yeah uh the other thing is you're talking about their pace they are in my opinion nothing but leisurely <laughs> they don't 
care. They just are, you know, hanging out. Yep. Uh, people being in the store, the kids, that little, do they have a little play area with the walls around it in that, in yours? No, they do not. Oh, they have those at both of them near us. And the, the third one, it burned down, by the way, which is a <laughs> nice. Uh, but anyway, the, <laughs> maybe that was me. Maybe not. I can neither confirm nor deny. Um, but they have a little, it's like the little pony walls around and they have like a little playground thing in there and some little toys. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a shit fest in there. The kids just stepping on one another. Like you got like six and eight year old kids in there on these, those tiny, tiny little slides that yeah. are about as long as yeah. like a four year old's legs. Breaking shit. Yeah. And they're throwing, yeah. they got little like horrible. the, the metal cars in there with big like Tonka truck yeah. wheels. We're like, and they're just throwing them everywhere. And you're like, that's going to, that's going to really hurt a kid. He's going to throw it and hit some kid in the eye. Doesn't matter. Gonna Doesn't really matter. mess him up. My kid yeah. Can do it's what like, he why are you putting that my in there? My kid is special. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they're, they're bad. I've had no, numerous times yeah. where my kids were in there crying yeah. because somebody did something and it's like, ah, oh, you kidding me. I will me? never go again. That place is terrible. Yeah. That place is terrible. Um, but what we do is we always drop the stuff off and they're like, yeah, it's going to be probably like, I don't think they've ever said less than an hour, but we always go somewhere else, do something, then come back. And, Along those lines, we, I had ramen for the first time. Really? Last – when was it? Earlier. It was my brother-in-law's birthday on Sunday. Hold on. We hold on. Hold on. Was yeah. it a ramen place owned by Asian people or was it white people? Yes. Yes, Asian okay, people. Okay, good. It was an actual okay, ramen good, place. Good, good, yeah. good. How was it? It was actually really well, good. So I, I got there and I I was looking at the menu and I was like, ah, oh, this is not going to be good. should have texted because me. It's like over a – well, it's over a hundred degrees here, and I'm like, "Why are we going to ramen? Like, this is dumb." You sound like this is this is a bad selection. You sound like you? <laughs> no, you sound like my family. I'm like, but, "There's air conditioning inside, you dopes." <laughs> well, but it's still hot. Like, soup just makes me hot and sweaty. <sighs> like the hot soup, so gross. Anyway, so we <laughs> so we get the food. we get the food right. Um, at some point, my wife actually was like, "Hey, look at this," and she like pulled her spoon out, and there's like a fly in it, and I was like, "Oh." Uh oh, that sucks. So we go over and they gave us free food and they were actually like super nice about it. They're like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Like I you could tell they didn't do it on purpose. There was enough stuff in there, you can't like see a fly. But they're like really nice, <laughs> package us a new one, refund us extra money. <laughs> so then so yeah, so that was great, right? But no, the food was actually really good, man. It was uh it looked like a bunch of stuff in there that I absolutely did not want at all. Like just ingredients that what, I wouldn't have wanted. What kind of ramen sprouts? What kind of ramen did you get? The uh, black pepper garlic or something like that. No. If they have a tonkatsu, some, if they have tonkatsu ramen in there, go get your. They had that. Okay, you should get that next time. Okay. Get, yeah. yeah, get that next time, especially if you like pigs. Yeah, this one had some pork in it, but it's like two little thin slices of yeah, pork. No, that, I, I was expecting that's more the, meat. That's the chashu, and you can you can request more of that. But get yourself the tonkatsu ramen. Okay, it's a pork broth, and it's made by boiling an entire pig for like three days, and then and then after you boil the pig, you 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 you, you mash its you mash its skin and the fat and everything. You you you, you through one of those sieve strainer things, you get so it's a very thick, fatty broth. Oh my god, it's so amazing! So amazing. That sounds less appetizing. No, no, but it's it was good. good. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> All right. All right. That's it. Um, we can talk about bikini models on YouTube another time. If you, if you don't, my, I have a new, my, my new love is Savannah Seavers. It's amazing what, what they can who, put on YouTube. That? Like, like, like people who, who, who want to talk about like Muslim violence, uh, <laughs> they get, they get banned and deplatformed off of YouTube. But this chick can oh, show man. off her plus size body in these amazing bikinis. Not a problem, which I don't have a problem with that. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, it's just funny. It's just funny because it's, it's basically nudity. And some guy is just reporting on news out of Sweden and they're getting, uh, they're getting banned. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we are now. Anyway, all right. What do you want to do first tonight, Ray? I love my butt. All right. Um, take me through it. I love fast food, but it's too expensive and it's not even filling. Yeah. So like, for example, I went to McDonald's. All right. What was this? Like two nights ago or something like that. Just in a rush. I was like, ah, I just grab some food. I've been there and it's probably been a couple months since I've actually been to McDonald's. Like it's been a while. And so I go through the drive through. I'm like, Hey, do you guys still do bacon on the burgers? And they're like, yeah, but it's not the promotional price. And I'm like, no, oh, that's fine. So I'll get a double quarter pounder with cheese with bacon. And large fries. 
So guess how much it was. Can you guess? Double quarter pound of cheese, large fries out in California, mm-hmm. twelve bucks. Mm-hmm. Basic eleven seventy five. Oh. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, there's a Chinese place down the street that for lunch it's seven fifty for like a full to go thing, like a whole meal. So how is this double quarter pound of cheese and large fries that after I ate my stomach was still growling because it's basically what do they make it out Ray. of like? Air molecules. Right. Fifteen dollars an hour, baby. Fifteen dollars an hour. <laughs> I know. Okay. I know. And yeah, right. And and all I'm thinking is, I just pay like twelve bucks for this meal. It's not even that good. Like, I mean, it 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 actually doesn't taste that bad, but it's not that filling. And there's better food you can get for twelve bucks. I could go buy a nice like prime ribeye steak, like a half to half pound to a pound, and it, for like the same price. You know, Ray. Fast food's wonderful, all right? I'm not going to lie. I love fast food. I love pulling up to a drive through and like, hey, can I have a double quarter pounder with cheese and some large fries? Or, hey, man, can I have a junior baconator and some fries with that? That'd be awesome. Uh, I would like a milkshake. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, Chick-fil-A, can I have – I did this this week too. I, I went to Chick-fil-A mm-hmm. and Chick-fil-A. I ordered my number two deluxe with bacon, no tomato, add cheese. And then I said, can I replace the drink with a milkshake? And they're like, yeah, but it's a dollar more. I'm like, I don't care. I want the milkshake. It was great, all right? Um, fast food's funny, right? Because it's delicious. And you're right. It doesn't necessarily fill you up. Or if it does fill you up, then you're suffering for the next two hours because your stomach is trying to <laughs> yeah. try to get rid of it. Yeah. And then a few hours after that, you're suffering on the toilet. It's, it's an amazing formula that somebody came up with many years ago. Let's get these burgers out very – did you ever watch the movie um, The Founder? About the guy who founded McDonald's? No, I didn't. I didn't. I know what you're talking yeah. about, though. Yeah. Just check it out. It's pretty interesting. But someone decided that, hey, if we get a whole bunch of burgers out to these people really quick, we're going to sell a lot of burgers because people want burgers and they want them quick. I mean, it's very it's very simple. They want everything yeah. quick. The problem with fast food these days is that um, it's not very fast anymore, Ray. It's not very fast. <laughs> you can go into a McDonald's or sit to the drive through and you're sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting because they don't – do you remember back – let's talk about the 80s again. Remember walking into a McDonald's or a Burger King and seeing a whole bunch of burgers sitting on like that, that little – that weird little slide thing yep. under the heater? Yeah. So they'd have them yep. ready. They'd grab it, put it in your bag, and you go, right? Now, it's like they're, the fast food places are kind of like on the fresh to order, fresh uh, fresh to order or made to order. There it is, made to order um, yeah, bandwagon. It's not even fresh. Yeah. So, so, so it takes longer now. So they can just get rid of the fast food part of it. And – it, it, nobody wants a salad for fast food. <laughs> you know, I don't. <laughs> they serve them, but nobody. Yeah, wants I don't know yet. why we have to lie to our customers. Like, listen, y- y- everyone knows why we're nobody. N- nobody goes to McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's thinking they're getting a fucking healthy meal. They know what they're getting. They're getting a big uh, burger uh, full of, full of saturated fat and fries loaded with salt. It, you know, it's great. Oh, yeah. It's what we want. So I, I don't know why we have to try to deceive people with that stuff. You know, here's what drives me crazy about fast food restaurants is people who go into the fast food place thinking it's a gourmet stop. Like, hey, I would like I would like a regular cheeseburger. Please hold the onions and hold the mustard. And can you just put one pickle on it, please? Thank you. And I would also like a quarter you know, they just have to specify all the stupid shit in their in their in their burgers and they hold up everybody else, making yeah. it even even less than fast less than not fast food. Uh, you can figure that one out after. It's the worst. Yeah. You know, well, and it is stupidly expensive too, because I have kids. We go to McDonald's because kids love McDonald's. And all of a sudden, you know, you, you get in, you get in a couple burgers or a couple McChickens and you're, you're at $14 <laughs> for a couple of sandwiches and you try to add some fries to it. And thank God for my wife. She's always on the app trying to find a deal to screw McDonald's over, you know, is whatever they can do. Nice. Um, and, and there's been plenty of times that like I've gotten free. Like free coupons to McDonald's because I called or I tweeted or wrote a letter and complained. I went through this phase back like in 2002 where I was writing random companies like McDonald's or TGI or um, Ruby Tuesdays or just, you know, looking for keychains and any other free stuff they might be able to give me because I took time to write them a letter or an email. And so I would get like coupons for a free meal or free side or they would actually send me promotional materials. (laughs) It was was a lot of fun. (laughs) I don't know how I got into that, uh, but um, did yeah. I ever tell you about the time my friend and I accidentally ordered forty McChicken sandwiches from McDonald's? No. <laughs> did I tell? Yeah. So it was the uh, the night before Thanksgiving, and 
so I was working in and out at the time and my friend and I on one of our breaks went and got like a 12 pack of Pacifico, took it back to his place. And so when we got off, they closed early before Thanksgiving, right? Like 11 o'clock instead of one. So we got off and we're like, you know, let's go get some food. The McDonald's is still open 24 hours. So we went and got some food before we, and this is before we had anything to drink. Now, somebody that I worked with was telling the story about how her brother and his friends got super high, went to McDonald's and ordered a bunch of those 20 piece chicken McNuggets and got a hundred of them because they were just like, yes, we're going to eat them all. And they obviously couldn't. So my friend and I went and we're like, Hey, that was a pretty funny story that she told. How about if we each get a 20 piece chicken McNuggets? So we get to the drive through window and I'm like, Hey, I want 20 or like four. I want 40 chicken McNuggets, like two of the 20 piece meals basically. And they're like, are you sure? And I was like, well, yeah, it says 20 piece right there. And they're like, wait, you want 40? And I was like, yeah, what's the big deal basically? And they're like, okay. And, and they're like, okay, we'll pull forward. And then I, I added like some fries on it or something like that. But so we pull forward and finally get to the window. And you know, it's the only place open the night before Thanksgiving. So there's not like a ton of cars, but the drive is full. And so anyway, we get to the window and they they go, uh, so you, you really wanted 40, right? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't understand why it's a big deal, but hand them my card. They just, you know, swipe it, hand me back the card. And then a little while after that, they start handing us these bags. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why are they handing us these bags? But I'm thinking like, maybe they messed up something and I'm getting extra free food. And so I'm like, my friend's like, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. They're giving us extra food. Let's get out of here. <laughs> so we start driving and he gets in the, you know, we get in the parking lot. He's like, dude, there's no chicken nuggets in here. I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? And he's like, it's all, it's all sandwiches. So he lived not that far away. So we, we drive to his place. We get, I finally get, you know, into the bags, right? Yeah. They, they gave us 40 McChicken sandwiches and my friend. <laughs> My friend ate, he ate 16 of them. Oh, I swear Christ. to God. Oh, that's horrible. He's like, he's like, let's have an eating contest. And I ate maybe like six of them. I was like, you're, uh, you're crazy. But so the next day I, I called him and I was like, Hey, I, uh, I actually like on my way out of town. I was like, Hey, I, I came through the drive-thru last night and like somehow ordered 40 McChicken sandwiches and we meant to get chicken nuggets. Is it like, is there something I can do? Like get a refund or something? And they're like, She's like, hold on a second. <laughs> so she comes back and she goes, yeah, so uh, this is really funny because when we came in from the night shift, they were bragging that they busted out this 40 chicken sandwich order in only nine minutes. <laughs> and they were super proud of themselves. And so and I was like, yeah, yeah, they're dumb because that's not what we ordered. <laughs> but she's like, yeah, you can just bring back whatever you didn't eat and we'll just give you a refund for those. So I got like. 20 bucks back or something like that but just walked in and like when i went in they were like everyone was in the back laughing and stuff as they should as they should ray that's a that's a funny story a lot of steps in the middle though a lot of steps in the middle but that's a funny story (laughs) yep yep (laughs) um gotta get the background but yeah good times good times that's awesome right good for you i'm glad you got some money back yeah. I mean, my friend ate most yeah. of it. As you hang your head in shame. <laughs> this is the voicemail bumper. This is the bumper on your left. And this is the bumper on your right. This is a badass guitar riff. And finally, here's your voicemails. Sorry, that guitar riff's too cool not to play twice. The reason of this message is to inform you that SSA department <laughs> is filing lawsuit against you. An arrest warrant has been released on your name due to legal Fuck. enforcement actions by your social security number for fraudulent activities. Oh. To get more information about this case file from federal damn. database, to speak with the officer, press 1. I repeat, to speak with the officer, press 1. <sighs> Man, I wish you didn't join ISIS. I could use a lawyer right now. I, I keep getting those calls. I actually talked to the guy and gave him my info and, you know. Oh, yeah? It, uh, it's all worked out. They stopped calling me, yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right. That's it for voicemail. <laughs> if you want to leave a voicemail, call the Dickman line, 860-316-4776. We'd love to hear from you. Anything you got, we will play it. We will play it. All right. Let's do... Ladies and gentlemen. Dick of the Week. It is now time to introduce this week's finalists for Dick of the Week. And here is our first nominee. All right. Let's um let's do what everybody's been waiting for all episode here. Let's do this one first. 
Hello, Rich Dickman Show. Svensson yes. here, and this is my nomination for <laughs> Dick of the Week. This week, Dick of the Week happens to be a place, which happens to be my workplace. <laughs> Why does my workplace happen to be nominated for Dick of the Week? Because they had to let Silvio go. As what? you can tell, I'm truly upset about <laughs> this. Them letting Silvio go, do they know how much material that I will lose from him <laughs> not being at work anymore? Fuck, this I is know. a big dilemma, and I'm truly saddened by it. However, that's the way life goes. Rimgar, Ray, you guys are doing a great job. Have a good week, and take care. Svensson, tell your friends. Yeah. Tell your friends about the Rich Dickman Show and tell them to leave five-star reviews on iTunes. That'd be that'd be awesome. Now, my God, Ray, this is a huge development here. That yeah. Silvio, uh, the, the source for many of Svensson's great audio clips, is gone. He's gone. I have a solution. What's that? And, and it goes a little something like this. All right. So you, you hopefully have Silvio's number because you were such close compatriots yes. at, in the workplace. So you got to stay in contact with him. As soon as he gets another job, you do whatever it takes to get hired at that place. And no matter what it takes, you follow him around and work as closely as possible side by side with Silvio. Uh, you have to do it for the Rich Dickman show. I like, there, there's no other choice. I like your line of thinking here, Ray. I want to tweak it a little bit. Um, Svensson, keep your job. Okay. You don't need to go get hired at some loser ass place that Silvio is going to be working at soon. Okay. No, you don't want to do that. But, but we do assume you have his phone number. Give him a call. See what he's doing Friday night. Go get a drink. Go to a bar. Go hang out. Maybe he'll try to rescue a damsel in distress by smashing somebody in the head with a rock. You don't know, but that's the best time to get Silvio materials when he's outside of work, when he's in his natural environment. Get him liquored up a little bit. See what happens. So um, we, well, with all due respect, Svensson, we demand that you hang out with Silvio on your <laughs> private time. <laughs> yes. Do it for the yeah, show. Exactly. For the show. <laughs> All right. Yes. Um, we got, we got some stuff here. Uh, I saw this one come through on my Twitter, uh, this morning and I, I then sent it over to hot German news, babe. And I said, Hey, hot German news, babe, can you check this out and maybe find a source of this? Because this is incredible. And then she said, no, it's probably bullshit. It's not. And then she's like, Oh, wait a second. Oh, Oh, wait a second. It's legit. Oh my God. Here's some more stories. I don't know if you wow. I don't know if you saw this at all, but here's the headline from Reuters Investigates: How the body of an Arizona great grandmother ended up as part of a U.S. Army blast test. Her family hoped wow. Doris Stouffer's body would be used to study Alzheimer's. The story of how she became the subject of a Pentagon experiment casts a spotlight on a growing and unregulated industry: human body brokers. Okay, so long story short. This is from Arizona, and th this this woman died. All right, she was seventy four, and she passed away. This was in twenty thirteen, and she had Alzheimer's disease. So her son and her daughter in law wanted to donate her body to science so they can study her brain and study Alzheimer's disease. What wound up happening uh, was that um, you know because they were going to take a brain to cremate the body. Whoever they sold the, the, the not the whoever, um, the family contacted Biological Resource Center, which is a local company that brokered the donation to human bodies for research. They chopped off one of her hands and cremated the hand and sent it back to the son. So he thought he had the cremated remains of his mother. His mother ended up out on a bomb test and got her ass blown up to test, uh, to test a explosive, uh, roadside explosions. How the fuck? <laughs> Her brain was never used for Alzheimer's research. Instead, Stouffer's body became part of an army experiment to measure damage caused by roadside wow. bombs. Can you imagine? Um, I, I had it in here where they, they – how he, how he discovered this. Um, and I can't find it now. God damn it. Uh, but, but like the army officials involved never – they never looked at consent forms for donors or anything. Uh, and, and the son here – Actually, they show the, the piece that on, the, on a consent form that he did sign. He did not give them authorization to sell it to the United States military. They did it anyways. Um, but, but the, the army is just relying on the word and the assurances from the BRC that the families agreed to let them use them. As you read through this article, and I'll link it on the website, there, there's this guy, he didn't even have a college degree. Um, but he had been working with donation centers for like small organs, like eyes and, and, um, you know, 
ligaments and stuff. And he decided he wanted to get into the body broker business himself. So he started this whole business so that he could buy bodies uh, from you know dead bodies and then resell them either to research or to the military. And he got a better price from the military. I think it cost um, – yeah, the BRC charged five thousand eight hundred ninety three dollars for a whole body in twenty thirteen. <laughs> so that's that's how much your body is worth. <laughs> and and somehow the, the son the, the son didn't even find out. Reuters did an investigation and um and they they found that the bodies were being misused. Um, and so there's there's like a footage here of a military blast experiment. Oh wait a second, I didn't see this in the other article. Hit play, play. It's not gonna work. It's so trippy not going to work um anyways i'm going to link this story in the website because it's super interesting but yeah dick of the week would be to the brokers who uh who sold this body without consent to the united states military to get her ass blown up oh my god yeah what the hell what the fuck? so <clears throat> well so the thing is is like if you i i don't i don't honestly see the the harm in using a dead body for such things if they consent to it. Like if they're like, yeah, if, if I was like, Hey, I don't care what you do with my body afterwards, then like, what's the harm? Really? It could end up saving lives. I mean, that's the reality. It could, but the, the real issue. Yeah. It's like, it is kind of weird that they just do that too. It seems, seems so like black market where they're just like, yeah, Mm -hmm. let's, let's take this body and let's, uh, uh, it it was like, Hey, we're going to send part of the remains back. So that we, you know, they're being shady, man. That's, that's what's crazy. Yeah. Holy. And this is why I'm not an organ donor. And I know my dead ass won't have anything to say about it. And they'll probably harvest my shit anyways. Um, but because, because of things like this, I really feel like I, 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 listen, maybe I'm overreacting and I might be totally wrong, but if my license says a donor on it and I'm mangled in a car wreck, I truly believe that people will do less to save my life because they want to harvest my good shit. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm not a donor. I won't be a donor and I will be, I've, I've instructed my family. Everybody knows they need to cremate me. Do not offer my body in any way to science because it will not be used for science. It'll be used for somebody's sexual pleasure or a military experiment. So cremate my ass, cremate my ass. You know, what's going to happen is they're going to take your, like you've wished, mm-hmm. they're going to take your brain and put it in the robot and then you will actually be able to cremate Fuck. your own body. That's badass. That's, that's so metal, dude. That is, that's amazing. I love that you brought that up. Yes. <laughs> and, and that you remembered that's what I want is take my brain, if it's still functional and yes. put it into a robot and I will absolutely cremate my own body. Fuck yeah. But fuck this Boom. old piece of shit. Look at me now. <laughs> yeah. My big ass robot the dick just, from the ashes. Pfft. Yep, that's right. All right, you got one in here, right? This Canadian manhunt. Yeah. All right, tell me about it. Um, I, I don't know. It just came across. So Jesus it Christ. says Canada manhunt. I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, suspects were let go after being stopped. Uh, so basically, these two guys were suspected of murder, but before the murders were were uh, discovered. They were got stopped at basically like a the what was it some fucking thing <laughs> oh, <laughs> like a checkpoint right. like an alcohol checkpoint yep. and basically were let go. So all it is this article's completely misleading. My my recommendation for Dick of the Week is BBC News for reporting this as making it seem like these guys were suspected, got pulled over, and just let go. That's all I was thinking when I read this article. I was like, how did this happen? So I clicked on it and sure enough, it's like, hey, so these guys had murdered someone. They were not discovered as being murdered until, you know, like days later or something like that. But these guys in the meantime had been temporarily stopped and let pass through this checkpoint. I'm like, well, that was a fucking letdown. This is in <laughs> Canada, right? Yes. In well, Canada. you can do whatever the fuck you want in Canada. Fuck Canada. Well, you can kill people and just – you can go on, you know. The BBC would say, hey, you're in, in Manitoba. And they'd be like, yeah, I'm chilling out here. Come do something about it, right? Nobody cares. Yeah, those constables were like, hey, have you had anything to drink tonight? They're like, no. Nope. <laughs> have you killed anyone recently? Maybe twice. Maybe. Oh, really? What? What? And they're like, well, we're sorry about it. Sorry, boot it. Hey. And then they were like, all right, go ahead. <laughs> hey, buddy. We're sorry about it. We didn't mean to murder anybody, but it's a boot time. That guy got what his ass was coming for me. <laughs> I just thought it was such a letdown reading that article. Right. It was so disappointing. So who's who's the dick? Really BBC fun. or the constables? 
BBC, okay. it's clickbait headline. It, I, I thought it was going to be way juicier than that. Yeah. Fuckers. Okay. Speaking of juicy, Hot Drummer News Babe was in a mood today. I like it when she's in a mood. Uh, also, hey, <laughs> I, I offered uh, HDNB um, uh, a blog spot, spot on, on our website, richdickman.com. And I, I said, Ooh. you can call it the weekly, the rebuttal. Because, you know, when she has something to say about things that we might say in the pod, it gives her a forum. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a great idea. Mm-hmm. She said she might be able to get talked into it. So I'm going to try talking her into it. I'd love to throw some more content on the website once Ray redesigns it. But she sent this in. <laughs> Poor Ray. Maybe I'll redesign it when she agrees yeah. to write on Now, this is going to be a little bit of a sensitive subject here, Ray. So I hope we can talk about this without um, without becoming enemies. Uh, and, and I want my listeners, all seven and a half of you, to understand uh, this all comes from a place of love. Okay, so this is what HDNB wrote before she sent us the article. Um, so I'm pretty cranky today, so I'm going to pontificate on this Dick of the Week nomination for a sec. The story shows that we are all Dicks of the Week because we have permitted esports to become a job slash thing. We're watching other people play video games. WTF. The bigger Dick is the gamer kid for a few reasons. Number one, he goes by ninja and number two he notes in the story below but as i looked at the next step in my career i wanted to be somewhere that empowered me to push the boundaries of gaming and achieve bigger goals within the industry yay all the men children get a cookie now career boundaries of gaming this is the douchiest thing i've read in some time you know how some cultures believe that if you get photographed a part of your soul is lost in the process that's how i feel (laughs) after reading the story so here's a quick the story, real quick. All right, because this is this is actually pretty incredible. I, I'm just finding out about this today. But the headline is "Ninja Out: Gaming Megastar Leaves Twitch for Mixer." I don't even know the fuck that is. But by Jake Siner, the AP sports writer, Ray Fortnite superstar Tyler Ninja Blevins has left Twitch and is taking his video game live streams to Microsoft's Mixer platform. A stunning switch that could have wide ranging consequences for the rapidly growing industry. Levins announced his move Thursday, ending a hugely profitable partnership with Twitch, a live streaming giant owned by Amazon. I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity Twitch has provided me. Levins told the Associated Press, next step in my career, we already talked about this, um, Mixer provides me with more ways to connect with my community. Levins, here's where it gets good, Ray. Levins has earned millions broadcasting himself playing Fortnite and other video games on Twitch and YouTube. He has over 14 million followers on Twitch, and the platform has hosted many of his pioneering esports moments, including a Fortnite event in March 2018 featuring rappers Drake and Travis Scott and football player Juju Smith-Schuster that propelled the game into a full-blown cultural phenomenon. Blevins will host his first Mixer livestream Friday from Lollapalooza. (sighs) Christ, the 28-year-old publicly invited Kyle Gearsdorf, the 16-year-old who earned $3 million on Sunday. For winning the inaugural Fortnite World Cup to join him. I also read somewhere that they paid him like $900 million. Microsoft, they paid Ninja. Ray, what do you think about this? That much. Yeah, what do you think about, about this this nonsense? Well, you can't blame him. I mean, if someone was going to pay me that much to do almost fucking anything, I what would you do? Say no? I mean, you, you can't necessarily hate on, on Ninja for doing that. Um on the other hand, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's one of those things. It's just, it's, it is stupid that we somehow put these people on a pedestal, I guess. Like somehow they're incredible. I mean, they're, they're playing a video game. I mean, on the other hand, you could say the same thing about like, you could almost flip the script and be like, well, Tom Hanks just pretends he's somebody else. So, so I don't even know what we're supposed to do with any of this stuff. Like you could, you can make any argument you want, but the reality is he's playing a game. Like he, I I don't see how it's that entertaining to watch someone do that. It really isn't. So whatever. You're a streamer. Whatever. True. (laughs) But I do it because I like to talk to the people while I'm streaming and just enjoy. I I do it for fun. Like I'm not doing it for the money. So I have, I have so many mixed feelings about this. All right. And I am, you know, ever since leaving World of Warcraft and leaving Torn Think Tank and and having a fallout within that community, I'm kind of, I would consider myself anti-gamer, okay? Even though you do what you want, make your money, I don't care. It's not my thing. Um, So you're right. You can't blame Ninja 
I bet you he has no martial arts training whatsoever, Ray. None. All right. Uh, anyways, you can't blame him for taking all the money. I don't blame him one bit. If Microsoft or anybody, if if Pornhub came to me and say, "Here, here's three million dollars," I, you know, all right, here's my dick. What do you want to do with it? It's, it's a lot of money, right? We need a lot of money these days mm-hmm. to be happy, or try to find happiness, just to start the path. Anyways, um, so I can't blame him, but what you can do is blame Microsoft for giving a platform for that. Why? Uh, what does it matter, Rem? It's for sports, and they have advertising money. I'm like, okay, cool, but here we are. We're talking about, uh. Uh, uh, immigration policies and people being stuck at the border and um, trying to find a a healthcare plan that works for everybody and trying to make sure we get the homeless people off the streets and clean up our schools and fix Baltimore and get rid of the rats and all this other stuff, right? We, all the other problems in the world, gun control or sensible gun control or, um, you know, abortion rights, sensible abortion, you know, everything, all these problems that we get pounded in the head with in, in the news day after day after day. But Microsoft's going to give $900 million to Ninja to stream in their fucking service. (laughs) Where are our priorities, right? Microsoft is going to go ahead and give (sighs) millions of dollars in political donations to the candidates of their choosing. And these candidates will do nothing to help the homeless in San Francisco. And they will do nothing to help Baltimore. And they will do nothing to help people at the border. They will just go on TV and say sound bites they think you want to hear. While the entertainment industry and Microsoft and Twitch and all these other fun and things that aren't really that important are just giving money left and right to people who may not really deserve it. My problem is priorities. Well, it's still, I don't know. It kind of goes back to like, spend your money on whatever the fuck you want. Ultimately. Right. Like as long as you're not hurting somebody. Oh, sure. As long as you're not hurting someone, spend them. So, but yeah, it, it's weird because it, if there's so many, more entertaining things that out there. I don't, I don't, who are the people that ha, there must be. Okay. So if he's got 14 million, viewers, and I've never heard of him, by the way, uh, followers, so 14 million followers. Really? I've never heard of the guy. <laughs> you, you might've seen him on like the Samsung commercials when the Samsung like note nine came out and they were advertising the note nine with the, the Fortnite and like the girl like worked her way up to being able to play with Ninja. <laughs> stupidest commercial ever uh samsung note 9 great phone though uh anyway so if he's got 14 million followers so obviously there's that's a pretty good following you know what we should do is see like how many people watch uh, other things uh, you know compare that like what other things get 14 million followers slash consistent viewers uh, uh, besides and, the rich and copy show. them exactly um, that's pretty obvious <laughs> and copy them. but do comparisons because it, it would be interesting it's i mean like, the reality is is his, uh, I mean, from an economical standpoint or like a business standpoint, you're paying him or his overhead is literally like what his rent and computer and like, like there's nothing there. So financially, it makes perfect sense. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they are making a bunch of money, but that seems, it seems $900 million. Holy smokes. That's way too much right. money for. So I'm really curious as to what this sounds like. So this is Ninja's video from a week ago, and I want to see how annoyed I get. Oh, at first we have to get through a commercial, so I'll turn the sound down, because of course he monetizes. He's the kid that's kind of spiky blue hair. Yeah, it looks that way. In the headband. How old is it? He's 20-something? I mean, it looks like he's never had sex with a woman. Or, or a man. He definitely hasn't. Or a man. Okay, so here we are. He's playing Fortnite. Unless he kind of blow up doll. No, I'm actually going to try that. I'm going to land up here, and then I'm going to go for it. You can still land Lagoon. What the fuck am I watching? Yeah, it Fortnite. Not People are entertained. And then by they're this? gonna build a bunch of shit. Land That's what I'm saying. Save. How is this entertaining? This guy gets nine hundred million dollars for this. He's got I'll stupid pink hair. He's got one of those stupid right gaming chairs. Me. He's got ninja in some dumbass <laughs> font like that he thinks is. is oh, I'm so angry. Yeah. Me. And this has two million, oh, two and a half million views. Ray, what, what we're watching now. Yeah. Sound effects in this guy saying one or two words is two and a half million views. Let's fast forward a little bit. Um, well, he is good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now he's Sorry, drinking an energy drink. And other people are laughing. He's, is, is, the, is it label out like I do it? I Look, really this guy's he, nope, it's label in. A, because a, he probably doesn't have a sponsor for me. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm so angry okay, right now. Go, we can advertise better than this guy. 
So there's there's super talented people out there too, Ray, who don't get nine hundred million dollars or don't get more than fifty followers. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. All right, Ray. I don't need to say any more about this. Um, if if any of you have an opinion yeah. on some of these dickhead streamers, uh, call the Dickman line eight six zero three one six four seven seven six. Or well, it's the streamers that think that they're good, like for and and don't actually do anything. Like they're not actually doing anything. They somehow think that they're above everyone else when all they're doing is playing a video game. You're not more talented than anyone else. Yeah, like you're just playing. A you're video a loser game. piece of shit like who I hasn't said, gotten I, out of your basement. Fuck off. Well, like I said, like I I stream, but it's literally because. I'm, I don't know, like other people get in there and I can chat with them. Like there's yeah. a few people I know through that and it's fun to talk Matt, to them. But I don't, I'm not like getting out there being like, oh, I'm famous. Come watch me. Play right. games. And Matt from Not For Human Consumption, he streams on a regular basis. He's out yeah. there, he's talking with people and yeah. having a good time. He's not, mm-hmm. oh, God. All right, right. We got to think about this After one. After much deliberation, the incredibly handsome expert judges have come to the consensus that this week's Dick of the Week award goes to. You know, it's tough. It's an easy one for it's me. It's tough, but it's obviously Svensson's workplace that fired Silvio. Yep. 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 I absolutely concur. God damn it. Svensson, you need to Undisputed. fix that. You need to fix that, man. Yeah, maybe you can get him rehired somehow. You know what makes me crazy, too? Games journalism. <laughs> As if they did investigative research. Yeah, games. <laughs> journal- I'm a games journalist. Are you? Are you fucking kidding me? You got a free <laughs> copy of a game, and now you won't say anything bad about it. Oh, fuck, fuck you, and your man. dishonest ass. Fuck yourself, games journalist. Like that's a job. Oh, you play so fucking good. video games and give it a it's score so between good. one and ten, and it's always above an eight because he got it for free. <laughs> so don't give me that shit. Because you start reviewing these games oh. in a negative light, you're not getting any more free games to play. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself oh, I love goddamn it. games journalist okay um what do you want to do next you want to do tick tips <laughs> sure yeah 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 <laughs> this is a bumper for the just the tips tip. segment because ray wanted an excuse to make his voice sound cool and talk about himself in the third person okay you got an email Hmm. jacob wrote in and he said uh what is the best path to becoming the world's most renowned streaker? You know, I was thinking about this. I just saw the question now for the first time because the show, I, it's all improv for me, Ray, and it's not a joke. I actually just saw this for the first time just now, but I had these two thoughts come to my head. And I think there's like, there's two ways to do it, one of which is better than the other. So the obvious way, right? The obvious answer one would think is to get a ticket to one of the biggest sporting events in the world, be it the Super Bowl, excuse me, the Super Bowl. Or like the World Cup final or something in the Olympics, something that has a huge national and worldwide audience, right? And get on the field and then just get your ass naked and avoid the cops for as long as you can. You got lots of eyes, a lot of people, a lot of delay in the game. You know, there's a lot of like viral videos going around. Boom, right? That's, that's one way that's very obvious. Now, let me, let me throw a curveball at you, right? What if, what if you wanted to become the world's sports reference, most renowned streaker? Well, maybe, maybe you start small. Maybe you start at like a double A baseball game and get your bare ass out there, right? Get caught, get a fine, <laughs> go to a different state, go to something a little bigger. Maybe you go, maybe instead of like the Bingham to Mets field, you're now at like the Jacobs field in Cleveland and you're running across that one butt ass naked. You're like, oh my God, it looks like the guy we saw in Binghamton three weeks ago. All right. So you take your fine, maybe you serve a day in jail, whatever you get out. Okay. But then you go do it again. And then you go to a bigger event. And a bigger event and just all over, maybe hit a soccer field for the MLS league or uh, stay away from women's sports. That'll be sexual assault. So just do men's sports. Um, <laughs> but, you know, work your way up. Do it a number of times. Get on camera. What, what if the streaker is a woman? What if it's one of the streaker? I mean, this you, is you're, gonna, you're, hurt, you're hurting my brain. You're hurting my brain. I don't know what to tell you at that point because there's different rules. Mm. There's different rules at that point. Okay. <laughs> right? I don't know what to say. But if, if, if you start small and you work your way up and you get more viral videos of you in different places and more places, maybe that's a better way to becoming the world's most renowned streaker. Maybe you're getting yourself on a show like America's Got Talent or some shit because like, oh, my God, this guy's like this guy's got more views than Ninja does these days. Hmm. Hmm. I, I like that idea. Start small. Yeah. Make a name for yourself. Cut your teeth yeah. on the on the little it's guys. Like, it's then, like crime. Uh, way up. It's like organized yeah. crime or robbing banks, man. You start small and work your way up. Well, yeah, it's kind of like uh, longevity pays off. I mean, if you can have a long streaking career, like 10, 20 years, 
I mean, that, that really speaks volumes. So, it, and it doesn't even have to be all the big events. Now, I would say that the big events, the main cameras are probably ready for this kind of thing. Therefore, you won't catch it on, on the main screens. So it would be more of the viral yeah. videos, like you're saying, where it's the people that are in the stands and they already have their camera phones out and things like that, right? So they, they catch those and then they get to YouTube, which doesn't, it, it might get a lot of views, but might not. But what you got to do is peacocking. You got to do some sort of something that uh, makes you stand out, right? Whether that's you put some really cool hat on yeah. that stands out and that's all you're wearing or some really cool shoes or something. Somewhere in the area where they're not blurring you out should you actually be blurred out. Um, but other than that, I mean, yeah, you, you just got to – I would say longevity My dude, and uh, quantity over quality. Do you remember Fan Man? I believe Mike so. Mike Tyson, Maybe. Evander Holyfield, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Fan Man – Dropped into uh, the ring. His fan man had had cameos on The Simpsons and and various other shows. Everybody knew who Fan Man mm-hmm. was and still know. You can you Google Fan Man, not Google YouTube Fan Man, and you'll see the video. Uh, same thing, you know. Get noticed. You have that one thing that sticks out. Whether you're running through 17 different baseball fields or you did the one big thing with a with a Golden Palace tattooed on your back. Yeah, you know, just yeah, gotta get noticed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Work the viral. Work the viral yeah. shit. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, easy. All right. Easy. Just do it for like 10 or 15 years. There you go, Jacob. Not a problem. Now, it's super easy. Um, we, we do not endorse uh, any breaking of the law. Uh, we do not condone any criminal nope. activity. So our advice is meant as satirical only and not to be taken seriously. And it's sad that we have to add this. If you throw a Rich Dickman on the back of your back, <laughs> you, can call, well, you can call in. You can, you can guest host the show. <laughs> Yeah, get uh, yeah, exactly. Get get a tattoo on your back. This is slightly better than mediocre. Yes. And then richdickman.com. <laughs> and, and then under that, eat the rich. Eat, yeah, eat the yeah on your left butt cheek, and then rich on your right butt yeah. cheek. Yeah, anything you can do to promote the show, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll gradually award more. Like you know, you can you can call in, you can guest host the show, um, you can replace Ray. You know, things like that. <laughs> yeah, I'd be all for yeah. it. I mean, come on. <laughs> hey guys, it's time for the thinking with your Dickman segment. Send in your questions, and we'll give you some advice. For example, I was told that recording in a public restroom helps with sound quality, so here I am. Hey, what are you doing in here? Yeah, what are you doing in here? Um, maybe we'll be able to give you better advice than what that homeless guy gave me. Whoosh. Okay, get a letter? Yeah, so Jane writes in, I'm a single lady, born in the country... But now I work in a large city. Since I, since I work in logistics and mainly talk to people outside my office, I'm not sure how to meet other locals or find the right crowd to mingle with. Any tips on finding friends or possible romances? P.S. You're both handsome and expert judges, and I love oh, the show. Thanks, Jane. Oh, what a I wonder where Jacob lives. But anyways, okay, thanks for writing in. And <laughs> as you know, I am an expert advice giver. I, I have 114 episodes of Experience Ray. I was thinking, I have done... I have done well over 200 podcasts in my career that started in 2012. It's pretty amazing. Hey, you keep saying 114 episodes of, of advice giving, but are you not counting any of these? It's not, you're not continuing to add to that. I mean, I'd say that some of these are pretty good. Well, advice. yeah, but uh, these aren't, these aren't my professional days. Now I do these, you know, recreationally, you know, whereas torn think tank, I was a trained professional. Yeah, that you were getting paid for that when this was pro. Yeah, bono. exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, that's basically how that works. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so Jane wants to know. How to meet people? You're um, barking up the wrong tree here, Jane. I don't know that we can help you. <laughs> we're, we're both very socially <laughs> awkward in man. real life. You know, I, like I know me, for instance, uh, I sound amazing in the pod. You know, I sound like very, I'm very friendly and approachable. Um, but you know, in real life, my I my point my head down. I walk tall because I'm the man, but I, my eyes are down. I'm not looking at anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to be talked to. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear shit. Uh, if I were to not have a wife any longer, I would be lonely the rest of my life um, because I have no interest, no interest in meeting anybody, Ray, except to you. And me. Well, dude, the easiest thing you do, you just go to a bar. Mm. Get fucking you, hammered. Where they, where, yes, have a couple drinks. Not hammered yet, but you have a couple drinks. You go to a karaoke place. Ray, can I just say you, you look suave as fuck actually, right now. Like you look, you look handsome <laughs> as shit. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so you just have to go to a place that actually doesn't have to be karaoke. It's even better if it's not karaoke. And you can somehow 
hook up a microphone to some speakers. And then you sing, take my breath away to anybody in the room. Oh, well, wait, here it comes. Sorry, that's another 80s reference. Um, uh, that's all I've got is 80s references. Just go with them, bro. Uh, just go with them. It's cool. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, the, the reality is you just go talk to people. If you go out and you talk to people, like literally with the understanding that if you never see them again, who cares? You just go talk to people. Just if you make a fool of yourself, whatever, you live and learn. It makes for a fun story. There you go. That's it. Just try to meet people. Just talk, start talking to people. Everyone doesn't even have to be someone that's like a quote unquote person that you, uh, are, are, you think has long term capabilities. Just everybody. Talk to everybody. Cause somebody will eventually say yes, right? Is that, is that the theory you're going with? <laughs> so, how many drinks would you suggest you have before you talk to somebody? Mm. Two. Two. Definitely start with two. Yeah. Because that's enough to lube you. Okay. So, well, you know what, Ray? Let's, yes. let's, let's do a little role play here. Why don't you be the sexy woman I'm meeting at a bar after I have two drinks? All right. I love playing sexy woman. <laughs> All right. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> hey. How you doing? Hey. I, I'm good. Yeah, all right, good. What are you drinking tonight? I'm really enjoying the sex on the beach. All right, I like that. I like that a lot too. Uh, can I get you another one? Uh, I suppose. I mean, I was really enjoying this drink by myself, but if oh. you insist, uh, you no. Know, uh, sometimes a little bit of company, uh, you know, makes things just a little more enjoyable. I, here, I'll tell you what. Let me get you a drink. You give me a chance. Give me five minutes, and if I don't get you laughing. I'll go away. What do you say? All right, that works. All right. You know, but you're you're picking up the tab, right? Of course, of course, baby. Of course. All right. Hey, bartender, another one. Wow. Thank you. All right. What a gentleman. Yeah. So where are you from? You around here? You, you local? Yeah, I, I pretty much live here at the bar. You live at the bar? Oh my gosh. Where do you live? Upstairs or downstairs? Uh, I've, I own the bar. I actually live. It's all mine. So you own the bar and you're, you're sampling your own wares. Yes, that's oh, okay. correct. All right, sounds like I have you laughing already, but I'm going to try a little bit harder here. Uh, I've always had a thing for gutter sluts. You know what I'm saying? Wow, what do you call? Would you call me? Oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, baby. I was watching this Twitch streamer earlier tonight, and uh, I heard him use language like that. I thought you might be interested. I'm sorry. How's that What's drink? What's Twitch? Oh, what is this a, Twitch thing you speak of? Yeah, it's this thing where where these young kids play video games and people watch them. It's actually it's quite incredible that uh, you know here I am, uh, 38 years old. I, this makes and, no sense to me. This no. is the 80s, and all I understand is pong. Oh, you know what? I just you know I got my DeLorean in the back. And uh, I have to apologize. Um, you might not believe this, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not from this time period. Oh well, <laughs> your long, long white flowy hair is uh, definitely futuristic. But I got you laughing, don't I, baby? All right, boom, in. All right, in scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's how. That's how you do that, uh, Jane. That's how that. That's how that it's, works. It's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that guy got laid. Yeah. Oh, he totally got laid. You called her a gutter slut and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, no female can resist that, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I wrote some, I wrote some notes here that I didn't want to forget. And I got, I got most of them. Um, I do want to give a shout out to one of a new podcast that I'm listening to. It's a garbage and gold mm-hmm. podcast. And a shout out to my buddy, Lisa. Hi. Thank you for your awesome podcast. Check it out. Check out Garbage and Gold on your I podcast. I heard when, apps. when she, I think it was her, when she was on NFHC when they're doing the pizza roll eating challenge. I listened oh, yeah. to that part and she was pretty funny on she's that. Fucking she was hilarious. She was, she was entertaining. Oh, yeah. She, she's hilarious. Because, she, it's great. Well, I, I, lo- I love the show. They're talking about, you know, the um, things that they don't like and things they like, basically. And one thing she brought up to the, on the episode I was listening to today was um, she does not like frisbees. And I was thinking, you know what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Fucking right. Because frisbees are a pain in the ass. She's not wrong. And you know what's even worse than frisbees, right? Generic Golf frisbees. No, 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 generic frisbees. Because the frisbee itself is like scientifically engineered to be cool, right? As annoying as it is, uh, it's scientifically engineered. But when you have like people just doing promotional frisbees and just doing a piece of plastic and a shape of a disc, those things fucking suck. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah anyways. Those are the worst. So I just want to give a quick shout out to Lisa and Lindsay in Garbage and Gold. Check that podcast out. Oh, I got Savannah Seavers back on my YouTube. Uh-oh. Turn the page. <laughs> Time to end the podcast. That's right. Got <laughs> things to do. All right. Ray. <laughs> We got one more thing I wanted to talk about, and we forgot last week, so we're going to do it this week. You want to you want to get it started on the best sandwiches by state? Yeah. So I came across this on Twitter. Yeah. And famously, and- when Huel was still with us, I decided to tell you why I didn't like what was wrong with every state that Huel named. So this will be an extension of that. Oh yeah. Okay. Now, do you, how, how do you want to do this? Do you want me to go through every single one of them? Do you want no. to try and guess what the sandwich is, and then we, or something like that? It's 50 goddamn fucking sandwiches. I'm not going to do all 50. Well, not every <laughs> single one of them, but – so like – um Well, let, let me see what the first one looks see. like so I can decide. I, again, I haven't looked at any of this stuff. All right. So – Do you um, want me to go through them or you want me to scroll through where's them the Where's the fucking article? Oh, Alabama. Oh. Uh, we'll have to go – okay. So the first one – yeah. So you go through them. You tell me It's alphabetical. It's yeah. alphabetical. Okay. You want, you want, we can do it quick. Pretty yeah. quick. Can, so Alabama. Barbecue barbecue chicken sandwich with white sauce. What's the white sauce made out of? Um, I don't think it says. Well, see, this uh, is a bull. This hard. is this is already bullshit. I want to know what that white sauce is made yeah, out. Is I it know. like a pepper I gravy? Know. Is it? Like, all right, all right. It looks good. Though. It kind of looks like it. Yeah. What's next? Alaska smoked salmon sandwich. Gross. Which, you know, makes sense. Oh, there's an article with it too. Jesus, Ray. Jesus Christ. Um, soaked salmon sandwich. Now, let me tell you something about salmon, Ray. Do you like salmon? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Well, something is totally wrong with you because salmon sucks. Salmon is the worst fish. Why? What? Because it tastes like fish. Fuck you, salmon. Go to hell. All right. Oh, what's you're next? crazy. Okay. Well, how about this? How about I, I'll, I'll uh, get to a couple states and I'll ask you if you can guess what they are right. and see how surprised you are when you're wrong. All right. What do you think California's sandwich is? Something with avocados. <laughs> no. The California French dip. What? Who the fuck made this? Yeah. California cuisine may summon images of vegan avocado toast, but the sandwich to try in the Golden State is perennial fave, the French dip, allegedly invented in Los Angeles. Okay. At the Philippe de, the original. Right. Like, like what? California and kiss my ass. Can we do Arizona real quick? Because our buddies at NFHC are in Arizona. Okay. Yeah. 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 They've got the Southwestern the panini. Something tells me they that don't have paninis wrong. in Arizona. So I don't know what the fuck this thing is. All right, but it's it's, no, it's, it's like- Thinly sliced ham, avocado, seasoned black beans, cheese, and house-made chipotle. From that seems completely wrong. The Panini Arizona's people. Arizona's like Arizona's like uh, the West Coast, Florida. It's where all the retired people go. Yeah. So you're talking retirement. It's it should just be Denny's down there. It's yeah. literally just Denny's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> the Denny's. Sandwich. It's just grand sla- a grand slam sandwich yeah. is what it should be. Yeah. Hey, hey Matt, Dylan, Dave, or, or New Edition Jay, uh, give me give me a heads up here on the Panini People food truck in Phoenix yeah. with this bullshit yeah. with this bullshit Southwest Panini sandwich. Okay, tell me. Yes, please weigh in because that sounds like a hundred percent. Ray, wrong. bring up Connecticut. I want to I want to guess what Connecticut. Oh, hold on, I got oh, alphabetically. I got Colorado first. Okay. Can you guess what that one is? Oh God, you're um, never gonna guess this. Is it? Hold on. Is it? Is it? Is it more vegetable based? More like a like a ranching meat based? Like, is it a pork type of it's, sandwich? Yes. It's pulled pork. More. Is it pulled pork? Uh, hold on. What does it say? Yes, sort of. What is it? Okay, it's the fool's gold. Have you ever heard of that one? No, fucking. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. So, so okay, this this is why I asked. Legend has it. That one night, Elvis Presley took a private jet from Graceland to Denver just to purchase 28 Fool's Gold sandwiches from the Colorado Mine Company restaurant. Each sandwich was made from a hollowed-out loaf of French bread, slathered with margarine, baked, then filled with a pound of bacon, peanut butter, and jelly. Like, like a, what? How is that the state sandwich? I totally believe Elvis flew there in the middle of the night, so that's that's got to be true. I absolutely do too. Um, that, yeah, yeah, Huel. But the state sandwich. I mean, he, come on, Huel. If you're still able to listen to this despite your your ISIS ties and they're not have you ever had to, one of those? Yeah, yeah. Let me know if or let Ray let one of us know if you've ever had one. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think the next one, Connecticut. Okay, All so right. guess what Connecticut is? Uh, is it a lobster roll? <laughs> nope, it's the Connecticut style lobster roll. <laughs> it's like perfect. Uh, it is the lobster. Yes, why? But it says Connecticut style lobster roll. Why would they call it Connecticut style? Oh, I, oh, I have no idea. oh, it's, oh my god! Where, whereas, 
Is See, that right? No, no. Whereas, okay, it's the hot roll. Okay, I don't know why they call it Connecticut style. It's, this is the only way a lobster roll should be. It's hot. Yes, All right. Warm. Cold is not yes, a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there you go. But but here it says, but a host of spots still cook up a delicious version, including the aggressively unpretentious lobster landing. I've been there. I go there every year. So do you agree with that one? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you. I know you said it. I know you said it. But you like that could have been your. You're like, oh, this is what they're going to say. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't think well, so. no, it, it is what they're going to say. So you you and, think it is. Oh, yeah. It's delicious. And uh, it's true. Okay. Oh, yeah. A hot, a hot, well, buttered, but that's what I was saying. A hot buttered lobster roll is, is divine. It's, it sounds good. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had one. Well, definitely never had one like what you're talking about. No, because you've always had the bullshit for, for cold sure. one. And, and the only time I had a cold one, I was with uh, Chris OC in New York City. He took me to this place that sold lobster rolls. He's like, hey, you got to try this. And he doesn't even like them cold. We got them cold for some reason. I mean, it tasted fine, but it was weird because I'm used to my hot it's buttered not the same. lobster. It's not the same. Yeah. I don't want cold lobster. I want a hot lobster. You should have done that thing where you like spit it out all over the, the table bullshit. and then you Take look at it and you look back. at it yeah, and you throw it on the wall. <laughs> Fuck you, store owner, you bitch. How about – here's another East Coast one, Delaware. Oh, man, Delaware. Yeah. See, if it was Maryland, I would have said crab cake, soft shell crabs. Um, Delaware, Delaware, Delaware. Oh God. It's gotta be, is it something fishy? Nope. Okay. And not at all, actually. Oh, not at all. All right. It's going to be, um, some type of, uh, it's holiday, holiday, like if that helps. It's like, it's like going to be like a, like a, like a ham or something, right? Uh, Thanksgiving sub. Oh, fuck, fuck you, Delaware. I, I don't, I, I know, dude. Fuck off. Oh my God. Right. Like what is what that? The, oh God. That's, that looks horrible. <laughs> It, it's gr- it looks does not look good at all. Uh, let's see if I can find another one real quick here. Um, did you see the Florida one? Yeah, right yeah I did that? by accident, but I would have guessed Cuban anyways. Yep. Yeah, something like that. That definitely makes sense. You know, and the Cuban, um, people make a big deal out of the Cuban sandwich, but it doesn't look good to me at all. It's like this thick, gross ham and all this mustard and this and the weird cheese. Like it, That just looks gross. Let me go, yeah, go, go like to Rhode this. Island. Let me see if I can guess what Rhode Island is. Or actually, well, no, how about Maryland, right? I, I'm going alphabetically, okay. but here's Maine. Maine. How about Maine? Is it also a lobster roll? <laughs> it just says lobster roll, but it doesn't look like – it just looks like a bunch of lobster on top of a piece of – you can't even see the bread, it's which a, is how I prefer my – I'm a carnivore, so I, yeah. like, I don't need the bread. It's a, it's a lobster salad. But, it's fucking bullshit. But it looks cool. go, go to Maryland. I don't want to – I want to guess what Maryland is. Okay. Maryland. Ready. What it's, do you think it is? Soft shell crab. Nope. What is it? Pit beef sandwich. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't even know, man. Where do they come up with these? It's like someone went – it's like they had – it's like they just dropped someone off in the middle of these states and went to the first restaurant and they were like, what's the best sandwich yeah, w- you what's, what's your favorite sandwich? <laughs> and they were like, here it is. <laughs> like they went to one place or something and they're like, this is pretty good. Yeah. But often dubbed Baltimore's answer to barbecue. Pit beef is cooked over coals until charred and crusty on the outside and tender and pink on the inside. What? Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, serve Kaiser roll with horseradish, and pickles. mayo, and oh. thinly sliced raw onion. That just – that looks like a roast beef sandwich. Fuck that. Um, what, it, it basically it is, is. Is Massachusetts, Massachusetts? next? Massachusetts? Yeah. I want yep. to try to guess next. Massachusetts. Yep. Guess. Oh, man, I've never tough. heard of this. Really? All right. Is it is it seafood or is it meat? Is it seafood? Okay. It starts out like this: hoagie sub grinder question mark essentially. Um, it's none. It's none of those, but similar. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's what? a spucky. A spucky? Have you ever heard of that? No. What the? F- it's okay. That's the thing. What this the? common sandwich wrong uh, has a unique name in Boston thanks to its Italian immigrant roots. Spu- with locals. Spucadella. Uh, yeah, there you go. Spucadella. Type of Italian long roll. Uh, Itali- uh, similar to an Italian hero, a spucky is made yeah. with a ver- variety of Italian cured meats and okay. cheeses and can be served right. colder. Pressed. Let me tell you something. And this is how I know this list is bullshit and I hate you for bringing it in now. Okay. Because this, this bullshit. This is why I brought it in. This, this nonsense <laughs> right here. Uh, uh, this is not a common sandwich. Okay. You can't find this anywhere in Boston except at uh, Nebo Cucina and, 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 and Oticha. Okay. When when I go to the goddamn Italian deli with my pop, all right, when I was young or even now, I was there today. I say, hey, I need some cold cuts. I need some mortadella. I need some sorpresata. I need some American cheese. I need some provolone. All right, that's what this goddamn sandwich is. All right, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of Italian cured meat cold cuts on a piece of on a piece of bread. 
This is not this is not a, a, a common uh, Boston, Massachusetts best sandwich. This is just what a bunch of Italians put together because they're poor and they like to eat a bunch of salty meat. That's that's what I'm saying. Like this list, that's why I brought this up because I was going through it and like, what in the – where are they coming up with these? Like half of them I never even heard of. Okay, how about Nevada? You, uh, this one makes sense Okay, if you've ever been to Nevada or – yeah, anyway. I've been there it, once. It makes sense. I've been to Nevada once. Um, is it beef? Is it a beef sandwich? Um, it definitely can be, yes. I it, Mostly, yes. What the fuck? What do you mean it definitely can be? It is or isn't. <laughs> well, you can you – can, I'll just say yes, but I think of it as a few different ways as well. All uh, right. Tell me what it is. It's a patty melt. I mean, it is yes. Sorry. But I also think of it as done other ways. But basically, uh, patty melt. Okay. You, you know what patty melt is? Yeah. Did yeah. you see Mississippi? Uh, which one was that one? The pig's ear sandwich. Yeah, I know. Like, what the fuck? Pig's ear sandwich. How many people order yeah. a pig's ear yeah. sandwich? A- ain't nobody under the age of 65 eating a pig's ear sandwich. Come on. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm trying to get but to the, the Nevada. But the patty melt. Pa- Nevada. Okay. Patty melt. It's basically because. It's a burger on toast. Yes. Yeah. And because that's like a diner type food. And I swear everything you eat in Nevada is like. Diner food. Drunk diner food. Yes. <laughs> Okay, New Hampshire, we're back to oh, fish. Yep, man. fried haddock. That makes sense. Oh, I'm curious what Vermont's would be. New Jersey and Italian hoagie. Let me tell you, the Italian Ooh, hoagie is the same New thing as that goddamn Massachusetts one. What do you think about New York? There's this one's. This doesn't make sense either. Um, it, it should just be pizza, but yeah, it should be pizza. <laughs> I was about to say pizza. Is it something Jewish? Is it like a um, like a Jewish like a on a bagel like lox and like like smoked salmon on a bagel? No, no. No. Oh, pastrami. Duh. Pastrami God, on rye. What a fucking yeah. moron. I'm overthinking it now. Somehow. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina barbecue. I'm trying to, where's, oh, see, this is a terrible website. Um, I'm trying, I want to get the, I'm really curious of Vermont because Vermont's a Northeast state, but it's kind of landlocked, right? It doesn't really have the an ocean. Yeah. Well, the other one's funny. The Oregon grilled Tillamook cheddar sandwich. The grilled cheese. The grilled cheese. The goddamn grilled Tillamook. cheese tomato soup. <laughs> they literally yeah. are like, we're so, hey, right. we're so hippie. Hey, right. What do you, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think in Pennsylvania? What do you think is a sandwich in Pennsylvania? Uh, I don't know. They don't even, they haven't even invented sandwiches there because there's too many Amish people. Because yeah, Pennsylvania sucks, but it's a Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I did see that one. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey so John, tough. John, I need an entry for Philadelphia, for Pennsylvania. What do you think? <laughs> um, oh, just throw a cheesesteak on there, man. Nobody will, nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's too obvious. If they, if they didn't do it, no one would believe the list. Rhode Island. Okay. I got to Vermont. Grinder. I got to Vermont. Okay. All right. I'm going to guess what, Vermont. You ready for Vermont? Um, okay. is it, is it like a pork chop sandwich? <laughs> um, n- no, it looks like there's bacon on it. I got to find, I got to read through the whole thing. Yeah, it's it's no, no. Um, I'm taking another guess. It's, it's there's no fish in it, right? It's all it's all like uh, land meat. Um, turkey, bacon, maple aioli. What? <laughs> For even more local flair. Oh, because because they do syrup, they gotta put <laughs> maple aioli on it. Are you fucking kidding me? It's called the Vermonter. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, I swear to That's God, that's not a man. thing. And how does Utah get halibut? The Vermonter? I don't right? How does isn't halibut a fish? Y- yeah. Yeah. And isn't Utah so, with like And they're landlocked. Yeah. Halibut's a saltwater <laughs> fish. Yeah. Is it a saltwater fish? I don't even know, but like what the fuck? I hate this list. <laughs> Were they high when they made this list? I'm so angry at Virginia, you. Virginia. Right ham biscuit. What? Uh, Washington salmon sandwich. They just stole Alaska sandwich. I would have guessed a salmon <laughs> for Washington. And look, the best one: West Virginia sausage biscuit. I swear to God, they took a picture of a of a sausage big muffin and just it's posted it on there. I swear it, to God, it's a Jimmy Dean sandwich. Yeah, it's a Jimmy Dean. <laughs> literally no effort with this whole whole fucking thing, dude. We got trolled. We got to the end. They got us. Wisconsin, Wisconsin grilled Wisconsin <laughs> cheddar sandwich. Fuck, they got us good. I blame you, Ray. <laughs> Wyoming. Damn it. What do you What do you think Wyoming oh, is? Oh my god! Oh, I already. See. Yeah, it's a, it's a buffalo sandwich. No, it's beef. <laughs> it's a beef sandwich. It's got. It's yeah. a fucking roast beef. It's a fancy roast fucking beef sandwich. Fuck um, I, what website is this? Far and wide. Uh, go to hell. Yeah. Far and wide. 
<laughs> Hot Drummer Newsday would hate you. You're fake news. New dick of the week. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. We need to amend this. Re- retroactive. Holy hell. God. God. Oh, my God. God damn it. Oh, oh, look. And look, Wyoming. In it, it says like uh, – it says you can <laughs> – can add Rocky Mountain oysters. Wow. You know, Ray. Wow. Ray, fuck you and go fuck yourself. I'm done with this, okay? And you know what? You might be fired by next week. All right? You, <laughs> hey, watch your mailbox. Like, like, watch your mailbox. That one was awesome. That was a that was a great <laughs> that was a great bit. I'm just kidding. Ray, you had a good oh, show man. tonight, right? You did you did your first you did your first role play with me, buddy. Uh we many more to come. Yeah, we can role play lots of things, Rezo. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You be the girl well, tonight on the pod. I mean, we already like do that a lot off the pod. Yeah. All right. Hard up, Ray. I'm hard up. Hey. I'm hard up. You know, and it's 2019, Ooh. and everything everything is okay. So, you know, you're a handsome man. I got a really large I, dick. <sighs> so I, I don't have the F or the T, but I got the M. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, you gross. You better knock it off. You're gonna you're gonna alienate our audience. Um all right. Uh, I don't care. I mean I do. Yeah, I would I really, care. really like to thank you all for listening tonight. You are a good audience. Uh if you would like to go ahead and leave it's us a review best. on iTunes, that would be awesome. That helps, right? Get get the word out there. Tell a friend. And tell a friend about the Rich Stickman show. If you if you're a fan of podcasts and you know somebody who's getting into podcasts or likes podcasts themselves and you listen to our show, well, hey, you know what? It just takes one one little word. Well, a couple little words. Three, three words actually. Rich Dickman show, and let them know. Maybe, maybe they'll enjoy it. Maybe they'll they'll never talk to you again. But it was worth a shot to help out the show you love. So if you can leave a review, tell a friend, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Go to richdickman.com for all of your Rich Dickman needs. Give the Dickman line a call eight six zero three one six four seven seven six. Give us a call. Call the Dickman line. Let us know what you're thinking. What's going on with you? If you leave us a voicemail, we'll play it. If it's super offensive. I'll edit it, we'll, but I'll still play we'll it. We'll play it and make fun of you for being super offensive. We'll never make fun of my audience, Ray. Maybe you will. Maybe you will, but uh, not me. I well, am if not they're super offensive. That's their fault. Well, yeah, yeah. Remember, everybody, racism is stupid. Don't do that shit. Um, Rich Dickman Show at Gmail dot com. If you would like to write us, and you can follow us on Twitter at Rich Dickman Show. Check out my wrestling articles at wwepodcast dot com. Just click the opinion section in all the articles written by Rem Dickman. That's me. You can find me on Twitter at Rem Dickman. I changed my Twitter handle, Ray. Remgar is finally dead. It was easy enough to do once I remembered my password. Rem Dickman at <laughs> Rem Dickman. Follow my mom on Twitter at Rem underscore mama. Follow producer Ryan on Twitter at Ryan TRDS. And uh, shout out to my buddy Randy. I haven't heard from him from a couple of weeks and he showed up all of a sudden. So Randy, thanks for listening, buddy. Much love. Much love. Shout out to Umaroni. Oh, yeah. Who's been a patron since day one and Randy as well. And if you would like to be a patron, we're still waiting to unlock some goals. But once we do unlock those goals, Ray and I will go full time. Guess what? I have my last early morning tomorrow and I get back to my normal life, my easygoing life with a job that I can manage better okay. with more time to myself. So if we unlock some of those Patreon goals, Ray and I will be doing some more live streaming, do a lot more fun stuff. Yes. So it's patreon.com slash Rich Dickman. Ray, tell me about, well, tell them about you because I already know, I already know what you taste like. Oh, that's gross. So what the fuck I, is wrong with me? Hey, same thing. I actually, I, Randy was live DMing me during, while he was listening, I think it was last week. Uh, he's, he's a good guy. I like Randy a lot. Um, and Umaroni, you mentioned him. He actually is a really fun follow on Twitter. He likes – like it shows up on my timeline. Some of the stuff he likes is really entertaining. Um, but you can find me on Twitter at Jules Winfeld. Same thing on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jules Winfeld. Get on there every once in a while. Been too busy lately. I'm doing the same thing as you. Like the schedule's messed up. Eventually it will get worked out and we will be able to do more stuff. That will be fun. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how you get a hold of me and where I'll be. That's That's pretty much it. All right. You want to do a, you want an outro on Iron Eagle? <laughs> All right, real quick. Let, let me get to this. I cannot tell the difference between this Bud Ice and this Miller Highlight. They're the same. It's the yeah. same thing in different bottles. At this point of the night, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, just in general, it, it tastes like the same carbonated water. Hey, you're drinking Bud Ice tonight. Huh? Looking, <laughs> looks good. Would you like another? <laughs> yeah, I can do it. Want me to show you how to get blowfish on this? <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's enough. Good night.
<laughs> uh, I have all these notes for Iron Eagle. Like say, I literally was taking notes. I was so excited for Iron Eagle watching it because it's so amazing. I was literally taking notes and my so because I have the Note Nine that has a little pen and I was writing notes on my phone the whole time. Yeah. I was right, and my Kaylee's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Taking notes." And my kids wanted to take my phone because there was a coloring app on there. I was like, can we color on your phone? So she's like, what no. are you doing? I was like, taking notes. And she's like, can I color? I was like, no, I'm taking no. notes. This movie's too awesome. For work. Yeah. It was- <laughs> you know what? Just move, move the, move oh, the review man. to the top, to the top of the notes. That way we'll do them first thing next week. Also, yeah, we got to yeah, talk about do. your wife selling sex toys. And oh, fuck, oh, I forgot dude. to bring up unpregnating your wife. Oh, yeah. Dude, that was so funny last night. <laughs> She's like, can you go unpregnate me? I was like, well, how do you propose we do that? She's like, the same way you impregnated me. I told my wife that story. She thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. Just the way she delivered it was funny. But it didn't work, did it? Uh, not not yet. No. Yeah, try Maybe. again. Yeah. Ray, can you, can <laughs> you text me? Don't succeed. While you're trying again tonight, make sure you text me, okay? <laughs> During the event, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just tell her, tell her it's for science. It's <laughs> science. Yeah, she's cool. Um, she understands. Yeah, I don't. I could. Yeah, I might be able to do that. I don't know. I'll send you the video. <laughs> <laughs>